Hello and welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Today I'd like to talk about a technique whereby you can improve the performance of your patterns in a really huge way, not only in regeneration time, but also in stability and the ability to make changes to your patterns. As an example, we'll take a look at a simple pattern here that involves a bunch of geometric shapes that make up an individual instance multiplied or patterned on a plate. In this case, not particularly large pattern, 10 by 12. Let's take a look at some of the options that are available when making a pattern. Here's that same group of features and it starts with a plate. It's got a single protrusion that juts out from it. A couple that set on the side. A couple of drafts to slope the faces, a couple of rounds that are applied in different radiuses, and they together make up what I'd like to pattern. Well, I could start with the first extrusion, right click pattern. Let's take this one out half inch, we'll make ten of those, and then in the second direction we'll go three quarters of an inch and we'll make 12 of those. Middle mouse. That'll multiply out that first set of extrusions. Then there, I can right click on the second instance, ref pattern. And that'll multiply out those. So far so good. Right click, pattern, ref pattern. And you see how each time builds the pattern of that feature and then goes on to the next feature and then patterns that. And you'll see in this case the draft applied to most of the instances but didn't apply to all of the instances. So I've already got a problem going on. If I ask for the second draft, let's ask for that one to be ref patterned as well. And you'll start to see I'm getting some fail going on an indication, do you really want this to go on? So you can see I've already got a little bit of a problem. Let's uh, delete that pattern and take a look at another option. What if I take all these features and add them to a group and then pattern the group? Let's take this one, half inch, 10, and in the second direction, three quarters, twelve. We'll call that done. Now in this case, it's building each member of the group one feature at a time and then going on to the next instance. So rather than build the entire pattern with each feature and then build it that way, in this case it's building all the features of each instance one at a time. That's going to get a more reliable result, but as you can see, it's going to take much, much longer. We're only a third of the way done here. In the interest of time, what we'll do is we'll jump forward in the video. Okay, well we're starting to get close to the end of the regeneration process. And of course, this isn't just a one-time run-through. Every time I make a change, uh, Pro Engineer will require this full regen uh, in order to complete the development of all the geometry. But it does complete, and it does complete correctly. You'll see that each of the instances now are fully developed down to the last round, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so we can get it to happen this way, but what are some of the downsides? What if I wanted to add a new feature to the group? Well, I can't really do that without ungrouping it first. There are ways, I'd, under certain circumstances, where I could just drop a new feature into this group and it will automatically pattern. If I want to remove a feature, that also is difficult because it's already in a group. And if a feature fails, I can't simply delete it because it'll delete the entire group and all of my instances. So there are a lot of downsides associated with development of your geometry this way. 
So in this case, I'm going to delete the pattern, put it back, and ungroup. So let me show you an, a third way of developing the same pattern, and I'm going to call it uh, a turbo pattern because it provides for very quick regeneration as well as tremendous flexibility with modification. Watch this. If I pick a surface that is likely to stay as a result of uh, modification, and I hold the shift key down and I pick, say, this face here, release the shift key, I've automatically selected all the surfaces of the instance. Control C, Control V, and that copies all those surfaces. Middle mouse, I'm done with that copy. Right click, I go straight to pattern. And although I have no dimensions to pattern here, I can pattern by direction, where I can pick planes. This plane, we were going to make this one out three quarters, and we'll do 12 of those. And then for the second direction, we'll say go from the front, and we'll go the other way, a half inch, and we'll make 10 of those. Middle mouse, and that quickly develops a pattern. And you'll see it happens very quick. Why? Because there's no surface intersections calculated here. But don't be misled. This is not solid geometry. If I go to my wireframe display here, you'll see that these are all surfaces. But if I pick this surface quilt and ask now through Edit Solidify, middle mouse. It automatically will solidify that surface quilt and then that feature, right click pattern, can be reference patterned. Now watch how fast this happens. I don't even have to cut the video and you'll see it run out to the full 120 instances really very quickly. Every instance has exactly the same geometry as the very first and it is now all solid. I go to my layer tree and hide the surfaces. You'll see that it's indeed all solid. So we'll call that a turbo pattern because you can get it done really, really quick. Well, what are some of the options or, or flexibility aspects of this? These features are all individual. If I need to lose one, or replace one, or even add one, the pattern doesn't need to be modified. Let me show you as an example. Let's come up here. Let's add a hole. What if I just add a hole to this face? That's somewhat large. Let's make that say 060, and we'll just put this one on this face, put this one on this face, and uh, let's place this. Let's call it also through all. There's the hole. And let's add some rounds to it as well. What happens if I put the pattern back now? You'll see that the regeneration of the pattern is still just as quick as it was before. Why? Because we're just patterning a surface set and then solidifying each of those surface sets. Now you notice in this case I didn't even need to unhide the layer. Very flexible, very quick, and useful in any pattern, whether it be revolved, table driven, or what have you. Well, I hope a little of this made sense to you, and I hope you'll be able to utilize this technique in your large and troublesome patterns in the future. My name is Leo Green, and I hope you've enjoyed this installment of PTC's Video Tip of the Month. So long now. Have a great day.